hey infosec people this is ashish uh, back with all of you all over again so guys it's been a while since i have made a video uh, in this channel for this channel um because you know i don't get much time these days because i am also working on my startup basically a co-founded company cyber security blue fire team cyber security which you might have seen in the wild you might have seen some of my linkedin post but nonetheless uh, guys and again i apologize for the background noise because my setup is just beside the road so sorry for that guys in this video i'm going to show you how um, not really show you just you just i'm going to walk through how um, basically the root beer library for root detection works not really going into the greater depths but just going to show you how you once install it and how it's going to work and we are going to look at the dynamic analysis part of that basically dynamically hooking the application and then we'll also look at how you can bypass the application and basically patch the root beer library to make sure that you are in your next pen test you bypass this library and just work or and then just work so with that in mind guys uh, in a recent client engagement i found the client was using root beer library for root detection bypasses and uh, within 2 minutes uh, Uh, of basically looking at the application, I was able to bypass it. The root beer library, and it is just not new. The library is not new, and the bypasses are just not new. It's just that I am showing you my way of doing that. How a beginner would approach basically into uh, patching the application, um, looking at Smali, and how to differentiate basically the Java and the Smali, and how to sort of use basic analysis to sort of um, patch the application in Smali. basically we'll be looking at the java code the decompile code and the smali and figure out how we going to patch this application because at the end we going we have to patch the application in smali there are more modern ways of doing it but i am showing you how a beginner would approach it so as you can see in the screen i first installed uh, root beer uh, from the app store let's see how it works so basically the basic uh, usage of the application is just in front of you you just need to click on this uh, basically unlock button and it will just show you the analysis of uh, how the root beer is working behind the scenes to see whether um what is what basically the device's current situation is basically when it comes to root right you can see that um the application basically the phone is rooted and definitely this is a rooted setup which i am showing you again i am not showing you how the setup is going to look like uh make sure uh, you have freeda installed make sure you have an android emulator installed uh make sure you have objection installed again when you install freeda you get objection uh and make sure the setup is up and running to make sure uh, you are able to perform this um seamlessly uh, again to make sure uh, you have the setups up and running uh, again i'm not showing you how you want to decompile this application and how it's going to work basically um, again using apt apk tool and while using apk tool just make sure that uh, you using the r and the f flag to make sure that decompilation uh, doesn't throw any errors and basically while recompiling it might throw few errors but by using these flags you might not encounter these problems coming in um as you can see here right uh, again used dex to jar basically to sort of create the jar version of the application to look at the application the decompile decompilation and how the application is implemented basically you can gain sights insights to that right again with using jd ui i'm looking at the jar and going through the application uh, in a more static manner right so first let let's in this in this part of the video i'm going to going to show you how to dynamically look at the application and sort of hook the application to make sure you're bypassing all of these right so uh, but even for that you would you would need basically the decompiled version of the application basically the decompiled source code right so uh, again you can see that we have a few bypasses to be done you can see that the application is using su binary um it is detecting that the su binary do exist uh the read and write paths are also encounter uh, basically tempered um again the native checks are still um, have to be bypassed and the magix specific checks are failed because yes we are uh, routing this application with magix so the setup has to be a rooted android emulator right so again i'll be using objection so let's look at how things going to look like uh, again the gadget name if i'm not wrong uh no 
Yes, yeah, so basically the package name is com scoot abby or root beer for example and you're just going to explore that uh, the moment i click it you are going to see that we have um, basically objection has hooked uh, basically injected the agent to make sure we can look at the application in a more dynamic fashion and sort of uh, perform all the basically explore the application on runtime right so uh, basically still if you run this application you would see nothing coming here because again we need to hook everything up and running uh, everything hook hooked so you can see that we uh, so we have a couple of options here again i'm not going into how to use uh, objection i'm not getting into how to use objection but rather using in front of you to see to show you how uh, this dynamic hooking would look like so basically i i am hooking and i want to see uh, basically the class methods in uh, Android hooking list class methods for class methods for main activity so you can see that we have 16 methods here just to you know give you how give you an overview how this objection basically works in the first place so you can see that we have couple of different uh, methods coming in uh, we have check for root uh, and then we have um, this is basically the dump right this is basically a dump and you are just not getting the proper insights as to what function you will be looking at right for su binary in order to bypass this su binary for that uh, i think you should go to the decompiled version of the application uh, the moment you open it in gdg jdgui um, Sorry for the tongue, tongue twisters, <laughs> uh, right? So you have to look at the root beer dot class file, and you will see that we have a couple of functions working behind the scenes for this application or for this entire uh, library. You can see that we have check for binary function, which basically uh, does couple of tasks here. Basically performs a couple of checks in order to make sure that do we have a binary available for us or not. Right, so let's first look at this application and see uh, do we have any do we have any return values? So for that, you will have to use Android hooking um, watch class method uh, again the package name right com scoot every root beer dot root beer and then after this part you'll have to add basically the function which you wanted to look at i have to look at the check for binary function and i wanted to see whether we have dumped basically the return values of that function as you can see that in this static analysis you can see that this is basically returning a boolean function so um, we are pretty sure that this function is going to return something in boolean fashion right so let's run it and see let's hook this specific thing and let's see let's run rerun the application and see that what are we returning so the moment you basically we have hooked this function and the moment you run the rerun the application you'll see something coming in so you see that the return value is set to true that is the reason that is the reason it is unchecked and basically it is detecting yes we do have a binary in place in order to bypass this uh, we have a very simple way of doing that in objection by doing android hooking uh, set set the return value set the return value android hooking set the return value for check for binary to false right the moment you do it the next time you run it you will see please do pay attention to uh, su binary you'll see that we have a blue check here as well making sure that we have successfully bypassed it voila you can see it su binary checked right this this basically confirms we have bypassed this bit as well now let's look at the uh, second binary check function and let's see if we have something to do here as well um again for busy box binary you can see it is already bypassed not bypassed we don't have a busy box um check for dangerous props 
right we again uh, don't want to look it again this uh, this is basically very device specific right i am doing it for my device yours might differ check for magics binary uh, magics yes uh, we do have magics but it seems we have uh, for some odd reason bypassed it uh, let's uh, right sorry let's list the jobs we have uh, we can see that we have two jobs here let's kill them let's kill the other one as well 797 right now let's pay attention to this application let's rerun it and let's see what all has what all has basically changed You would see the SU binary is unchecked now and you might also see that the magic specific check is also unchecked. So basically we are doing two bypasses here for this specific library here magic specific check as well. Right. So while you do this. Uh, yes, while you do this, you see two of these are bypassed already SU binary and magic's magic specific check. SU binary is checked basically. Uh, root beer was unable to detect it and the same goes for magic specific check now let's also check for root via native checks what do we have uh, here root via native checks let's do for uh, native checks yes here we have this function check for uh, native check for root native again you can see that we are playing playing around with booleans so it becomes tremendously easy to bypass this library the only reason is that they are playing around with boolean functions basically boolean right uh, it says that the very first boolean bool value is set while you first run a function uh, for can load native library right so the moment you look at this application you see again it is boolean we don't have to worry about this because anyway this is going to return something and we are bypassing that in the native checks yes check for root natives let's look at this application basically let's just let's just give it a watch uh, watch class method and also dump the return values to see whether uh, what are what what this function is returning for us let's just rerun re -run it uh, okay so for uh, check for root native we again switch it to true root native uh, check for root native yes now again we need to bypass this let's just bypass this by simply returning it to false uh, check for root native let's rerun run it pay special attention to root by native check again both of these are set to false and it works let's check for rw paths as well RW paths. Uh, yes, here we have check for RW paths. Let's also check the return values for this function as well. Um, Rain on it. So to make sure, yes, again it says check for RW paths. It is again true. Let's set it to false as well. Let the application run. All right. Um, <clears throat> check for rw paths rerun the application and we have bypassed all of these we just need to look at the second su binary check right second su binary check check for su binary function let's see if this is the function being implemented i am doing this entire thing keeping in mind that i am a beginner i am doing it in the way that i am a beginner to just show you that how you would approach uh, this basically the bypass in when it comes to dynamic bypasses with objection doing it in a very in a very layman way how how a layman would approach check for issue binary uh, okay so we have Check for SU binary 2727. Okay, so it, it isn't returning anything. 
So let's let's not let's not do anything with that. Let's just kill kill this job as well. All right. Uh, <clears throat> check for binary. I think we have already bypassed it. Yes, check for binary. Basically, it is also check for binary props. Check for magic's binary RW. Check for root native. Check for su binary. Mm, okay, check for binary. Check for su binary. Okay. Check for su binaries two seven. Uh, Let's check this function check su exists. Check as you exist. Let's return. Let's look the return value. <clears throat> okay, so it is basically returning to true. Check as you exist. Right? So let's also make that false. Check su exists to false. Let's see if we have bypassed all of the all of those. Okay, okay. Yes, I think we have by bypassed all of these. Now you need to take note of what all functions we have bypassed here, right? What all functions we have bypassed for my device? For my device, obviously yours might differ. Yours will differ for the most part. Uh, let me open up a uh, sublime to sort of take note of what all functions we have bypassed um, all right uh, let me just list all of the jobs jobs list so i have all of these functions now in the second part of this video i'm going to show you how you can patch the application and look at the smali uh, and the java code side by side by side in order to make the patches work so you can see that uh, we have made changes in these functions 